of slightly over-architected backend, because I'm over software, so that's what I do. <laughs> add, add, add complexity to a simple thing. Um, that's been sent off and it's been processed. And if I click on this link, um, it says, do I want to open it? So yes. This is now that model in a web page. There's a little web GL TV. And, oh, because my screen, so you can see it. Um, if I get download, that STL file. There's Minecraft. Put that on there. Put on there. And that's uh, the software print driver for a make box 3D printer. So the idea is to have that journey between a child making something in Minecraft, which they're very familiar with, to being able to take that model and print it out if they have access to 3D printers as kind of slight as possible. So I've chosen uh, to not to have logins to the service at the moment. It's a, just a kind of uh, as thin a layer as possible between the delivery of the model to the child and, and the game. Um, there's the kind of vain hope that it will make uh, at least enough money to become sustainable. Um, I'm working with partners, Materialize and Makebot, and I'm working with Shapeways as well and try and make some money off uh, commercial printing with 3D colour models. So if the kid wants to have a lovely 3D colour model, um, I'm negotiating these uh, viewer services to set up a system where um, I can take probably somewhere between 10 and 20% of the print costs and use that to fund and keep the thing going. Um, <coughs> so that's it. That's kind of what's, what's in place at the moment. Um, so we we'll talk a bit about where the project came from. Um, it's, it started off very much as a kind of a, a project at home with my own kids. Um, I, I started off uh, getting access to a printer with Fit. A group of us got together when we bought uh, a 3D printer between tenants. And I presented this to my children who were enormously quite excited and thought this was very cool. Um, but CAD software, most CAD software like SketchUp or Tinkercad, was like beyond them and they simply went off to play Minecraft with their mates. And because I like software, it was actually relatively simple to take the models out of Minecraft. It's a very nice um, uh, open platform, the development community is very rich and there's lots of information, so it's relatively easy just to pull the models out of Minecraft. And I wrote probably 100 lines of code in JavaScript which enabled me to pull the models out and print them. And that was uh, the first model was that skull, <coughs> that kind of gold skull, which became our logo. I designed my kids. Um, we know this is this is quite cool we like this. So we told people about it, people used it, and we thought, what do we do? So we we went to the 3D print show in London, we persuaded them to almost give us a stand, and we turned up with our hundred times JavaScript and my boys, whose project it was, and uh, make a Gills 3D printer, you can see in the middle, and we sat on a, in a trade stand for the thing and had a quite amazing response. Lots of people thought it was really cool and really liked it. And my then problem was what do I do with this? I've got quite a nice project, I quite like it. Um, and so I was kind of indecisive about what to do. And then someone pointed out that there was a, a, a funding for it. So I um, applied to Nesta, they've got a thing called Digital Makers, which kind of very conveniently exactly matched the stage I was at. I had a prototype, I had a very definite agenda, which was about encouraging young kids to make things, um, which matched um, a, a project that the Nominate Trust in Mozilla and Nesta had put together, which is about looking at uh, creating sustainable resources outside mainstream education to encourage kids to be digital makers. So it just kind of was a very nice coming together of those two things. And I'm somewhere in between three and four at the moment. So I have built a monstrous uh, Google app engine and Rackspace based scalable system. So 
I could potentially have 100 Minecraft servers and 100 worker things behind it. I'm going to have two and two people playing. Um, I've done some WebGL and I'm doing, I'm kind of between three and four, which is integrating with other partners, things like MakeBot and Tearize, so that um, the models people make can go into those normal making channels. And I'm doing a lot of uh, tests and trials and looking at how people might use the technology I'm making. And a lot of that is, is working, th these kind of things I've been doing, why I'm doing. I'm working with a local school, Bethel Green. I'm from various workshops. And part of Nesta's remit is that I should, this is education, what I'm doing is education. And I'm, having come to this not being in education, being dumped in the middle of tech education. It's a very odd, tribal, interesting, device, not divisive, contested world at the moment. And that's quite fun to me. Um, and I'm, you know, slightly bumbling around in, in, in that world. And uh, as part of this, there are outcomes and expectations. So this, this is a project that isn't really a commercial project. It's not really an educational project. It's a hobby project that's slightly out of vogue itself. And I'm ambivalent myself about what it should become. And Nestor have set me, I think we're, you know, we, we agree, but they have a very set bunch of metrics that we're looking at. Um, engagement, so it's good if many children use it. That's one good thing. Um, that they learn particular discrete things is, is a good thing. And that we make some money. So this is what I spend my time thinking about. But in, when Phil asked me to come here tonight to talk about social change, I very much thought, well, there's a lot that these, these main objectives don't really cover that are about making, about the social uses of making, the potential social impact of making, that I don't think just saying um, engagement through education really, really adequately explain and it's a quote from Wordsworth, um, the child is the father of the man. And one of the things I was thinking about is that it's actually quite a personal project to me. It's not personal in terms of I have to take my house on it. It's personal and it's something I quite like and care about. And making things is something I do. In fact, this is, this is something I made when I was nine. It's a, uh, it's a Japanese, it's a zero. It's a, fighter plane made out of bits of firewood. And it's one of my most prized possessions. So to make things. Um, and you know, lots of people are doing that anyway, whether through choice or through circumstances. Um, um, our society is full of people who are in transition from one kind of um, way of life to another. So having context in which to do that and to share it with other people is important. Um, so the 40 derelict garages, this is what, well, you can't really see it, it's, um, but basically that's a garage full of rubbish, which is what a lot of them look like when we moved in. Um, they're dark and dingy. Um, they're semi-underground, they're at sort of lower ground floor level, so they do have some natural light coming in. Um, but the entrance doesn't look very inviting as it stands. Um, they're in Loughborough Junction, which is between Brixton and Camberwell, and it's generally a kind of between area that over the years has not um, had, had much of its own sort of positive identity as a place. Um, it's, it's a place with a lot of junctions, a lot of railways crisscrossing each other. Um, and that's just the, the map of where the garages are. Um, it's, it's an area that's been known for crime to quite an extent, but it also has a lot of um, community initiatives and creative uh, organisations of various sorts. There's a, there's a thing called the World Cinema, which is a sort of cinema club that shows different types of films. There's 
uh, Camberwell University just down the road. Um, there's, there's Myatsfields Park, which um, has it's a project that's kind of done up a park that was previously quite run down, and they've got community greenhouses and food growing and bands playing, all sorts of things going on in the park. Um, there's London Creative Labs, which is a project that's about um, sparking new enterprise ideas and looking at the sort of needs and opportunities in the local area. Brixton People's Kitchen are um, serving meals that are cooked from waste food that they collect from local um, businesses and they, they serve it up for free or for a small donation as a community sort of social gathering. And there are also a number of um, artist studios in the area. Um, and the people are the other sort of crucial ingredient of the project. Um, there are lots of people involved in various ways. Um, people who eventually want to become members of the space and use the workshops to make things or fix things. Um, people who are just curious and have got involved as volunteers or in various ways. Um, people who've been referred to us by um, hostels or mental health services or um, various sort of rehabilitation projects. Um, and over the last, um, well, since it was like late August, late July, August last year that we started the, the building work and we've been, um, we've undertaken the building work as a community self-build project. So um, uh, lots of volunteers and lots of um, people doing community service have been involved in the building. Um, so lots of organisations have been connected to us through that process as well. Um, the funding we've received um, has come from various sources. Um, London Community Foundation and RAP has, have given us um, some startup funding to get the project underway. We've also had um, £100,000 of capital funding from Lambeth Council, which um, came about through quite an unusual opportunity that they ran a project called Your, Your Choice, which was about um, Lambeth residents putting forward building projects that they wanted to get funded, and then residents could vote on projects that they wanted to support. Um, and we, we won that vote. We got about... Well, we got over 3,000 votes, which was 100 votes a day for a month of, um, of voting. And um, we have been awarded £100,000 of funding, which has been one of the most important catalysts to enabling the building work to happen. But um, for the size of the space we've got, it's not a very... Um, it's not enough so we we've also raised we've also recently been told we received 60,000 from the Tudor Trust and we have another couple of funding applications in the pipeline um, and we've also received um, in-kind support from several organizations um, such as Rockwell have don donated all of our insulation um, uh, well, not all of it. We also reused. We also received uh, donations from various um, construction projects that were disposing of insulation. And um, United House and Keepo are other other building contractors that have contributed materials or work to the project. Um, and lots of other smaller contractors have done so as well. Um, the, the process of designing the rematery has been a collaborative one. Um, we've worked with Architecture for Humanity, who are a charity who do um, architectural design work on, on 
um, building projects for social causes. This was the first project that they'd done in the UK. Um, and it won the Design Open Mic Award at their global conference in San Francisco last year, which was uh, great to be recognised. And um, we've also had some support from Good For Nothing, who designed the logo. We, we had a day with um, a group of designers from Innocent Smoothies who came in and put some focus on the, the brand identity. And um, we also, they also provoked us to come up with the name because originally it was called Brixton Reuse Centre, which sort of did what it said on the tin, but um, was not very interesting. So we thought Remakery would, was a, a more inspiring sort of name. Um, so basically, we're we're in the process of taking the space from being this sort of dark, gloomy space to something more like this, which will be full of people, lots of activities going on. Um, there's already been lots of people involved in the building work, everything from demolishing lots of the internal walls, because it was all divided into garages and wanted to create some bigger open plan spaces, so there's been a lot of demolition going on a lot of cleaning, um, jet washing the place, a lot of painting which has made a huge difference in brightening up and, um, and also all of the carpentry has been done by volunteers, um, we've put in the installation, we've been building walls around the toilets and things like that um, and we have volunteers and people doing community service on site every day from Monday to Saturday. Um, it's also a cooperatively owned and run project. Um, we're doing a community share issue. We're, we're a BENCOM, which is short for Community Benefit, or Society for the Benefit of the Community, which is a type of cooperative that exists um, not just for the benefit of its own members, but for the wider community. Um, so we're selling shares, which cost one pound a share. Um, at the moment, we're just selling one per person because it's really about getting people involved in, in having a say to a particular skill and build your own courses. So make a particular item, whether it's a, a chair or a bag or whatever. So, um, and we're already doing a number of these things, although we're still under construction. Um, we're already reusing, we, um, we have a lot of materials that people have donated to the project for us to use in our building work. Some of those can also be made available for members to use in the future. Um, we're already holding educational events. Um, we had a, um, a ceramic tile making workshop a couple of weeks ago which was a sort of pilot for things that we might do in future as, um, as sort of a corporate away days. We had a team from Lambeth Council's policy team come in and do this workshop um, and also volunteer on the site. And, um, and we're already enabling other initiatives to do their work. There's um, a group, I mentioned earlier, Brixton People's Kitchen, who do these local food collections and cook meals from food waste. They used the Remakery to build their mobile kitchen a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we had a lovely sort of evening afterwards where they cooked a meal for, um, for about 30 people and um, they're now taking it round to four different venues locally.